Ah, uh, retro games. Something that a lot of us older gamers say, Back in my day, things were so much better. We didn't have this pay to win or advertisements or broken glitchy messes. We had classic good games. That's a lie. We actually had a lot of crap. However, this game, it is not crap. This is one of my favorite Zelda games of all time. And today we have so many different ways to play retro games. Most common, of course, is to use, boom, the original system. This is by Super Nintendo. It is lovely and it is nice. But let's say you do not have a Super Nintendo. What then? Well, you can always pick yourself up one of these, a Retro Duo. I love this little machine that lets you play Nintendo games and Super Nintendo games. It is a lot of fun and, you know, it actually allows me to play several of my old NES games without little problem because of this top loading system. Whereas my old Nintendo has a bit of the blinking problem. Yes, I had to put it down for my original Nintendo ended up dying on me. So I used this. However, what if there's a game you do not want to play? What if you have a physical copy of a game that you do not wish to open? For example, my near mint version of Ninja Gaiden Trilogy. Yes, I do not want to open this. I opened it once. I played it one time. And after that, I put it in this nice little container. And it is now in a safe location for everybody to ooh and ah over. So, I don't want to play this on a system because I don't want to risk damaging the box or ruining anything. So, what am I supposed to do? Well, that is when emulation comes in handy. Yes, emulation, that beautiful thing that lets you play old school games on your computer. Or in my case, on my Wii, since I jailbroke it. Don't tell Nintendo. But there's one problem with emulation, and that is how you play it. A lot of games just don't work well on a keyboard and mouse. There are alternatives. You could plug in the 360 controller and remap it, or do what I do and use a PlayStation 3 controller and make a computer think it's an Xbox controller and remap that. But still, it doesn't feel the same. You have all those extra buttons that did not exist, by which I mean the two shoulder buttons in the back. Everything else still matched up. So how do we get that original gaming experience, but without using a Xbox 360 or mouse, mouse and keyboard? I was trying to say something, I messed up, I apologize. So, so we don't want to use the 360 controller, PlayStation 3 controller, or the mouse and keyboard. What do we do? Well, we got one of these. Look at this. This is an SNES controller adapter. That is right. Now, there are USB versions of any, uh, Super Nintendo controllers and Nintendo controllers, but I have read that a lot of people are swearing by these now. These are more accurate and a lot less hassle than a SNES USB controller. Wow, that's a lot of letters. So, let's open this up. This is by Mayflash. SNES controller adapter for PS for PC USB controller adapter wires upwards to two people can you really one two yes you can one two two people plug it in here plug it in there so we'll go check this out open it up and there you go there it is oh, the wire seems a little shorter than what I was expecting I was hoping for a much longer one. Oh no that's that's actually pretty good alright so here we go now it's a simple black box, simple black box, solidly built, good weight. There's the USB part that goes in the computer. That frustrates you to make you do this. There you go. Okay. Now, of course, we can all just sit and look at it and make it say oohs and ahs. However, nothing better does a review than testing this out in the field. Let's go to the computer. Okay, so we got the computer up and running. We got the uh, thingy here, so let's plug it in, and then we take this part, and we uh, plug it in there. There's nothing here that actually specifically says player one or player two, and now we got our controller. Alright, we got our Nintendo Presents, we want to do Link to the Past. Love this part.
Alright, so before I started the video, I already installed it to the computer. Once you put it in the computer, it's going to do the whole um, installing Windows drivers. It took less than a minute. I think it took like 15 seconds actually. And now we're going to see if it works. There you go, we got B. X for a map. Y for a little boomerang. Can we grab things? Yes, we can grab things. Can we throw things? Yes, we can. Look at that. That is beautiful. It might, it's as if it was meant to do what it does. Can you believe that? Yeah, so there you got it, man. This thing is, uh, I believe this was $9.99 on Amazon.com. It was, you know, quick shipping as usual. And literally plug and play. Literally plug and play. You plug it in, loads the driver. I'm using uh, Windows 7 64-bit. So zero issues. Um, I like to point out that this is not a Nintendo controller. This is actually one of those um, copies that you can buy at like a GameStop or something. You know, so it works on these copies. I know some people have issues with the copies. This one it works for. I do believe, I mean, if it works on this, it obviously works on the original stuff too, right? But there you go, nine bucks, plug and play. The, you know, the Super Nintendo cord this long and the USB that long. I could be on the other side of the room in my chair and I could be playing my Super Nintendo games on my PC with an actual non-USB Super Nintendo controller. Uh, I'll put the link in the description for the product and uh, again, Thumbs up! Good job, Amazon, and good job, who made this? Come here. Uh, Mayflash. Mayflash, there you go. Alright. So, thank you guys for joining me, and uh, we'll see you next time. Uh, I'm Mazer, and oh, I'm so used to saying this is WTF, but that's not. This is just a Mazer review, so uh, thank you for joining me, and have a good day.